It's Saturday. We are going to the pool today. And we thought it would be a good day to tell you a little more about us and how we got where we are. Let's go. So in 2012, we knew we would not be able to have kids the old fashioned way. And we knew that we needed to make a choice. We could either go down the rabbit trail of infertility tests and treatments and doctors, or we could pursue adoption. We chose adoption. What is this? Mom's. Mom's. Now it's mine. Now it's yours, huh? So we immediately began researching international adoption. We felt like it was the most logical choice Neither of us wanted an infant, and we thought that our chances of getting a toddler would be better with an international adoption than with a domestic adoption. We knew that financially it would be tough, but we also knew that God would provide. So we picked an agency, and we thought that all we would have to do would be to fill out a lot of paperwork and give them a lot of money, and they would give us a kid. We could not have been more wrong. We had no idea that before you could even fill out any paperwork, you had to pick a country because every country has different requirements and regulations and rules. And we also found out that um, in addition to the steep financial cost, there would be a steep cost of time because most countries require you to visit them multiple times and stay for long periods of time. And we weren't really sure if we could do that. And then to top it all off, we could not agree on a country. We argued and argued over it. We looked at about five or six different countries and it felt like as soon as we landed on one, it would close. Clearly, this was not the way God wanted us to go. So during this time, uh, Jerry Day told us about an agency out of St. Louis. Uh, is a Christian adoption agency that specialized in infant domestic adoption. We were drawn to this agency because of their emphasis on open adoptions and the way that they counseled the young women. On the surface, an open adoption sounds scary, but one of the rare things that we actually agreed upon was that an open adoption would be a mission field. We could not think of a better way to share God's love, so we dived in. We filled out mounds and mounds of paperwork. We uh, attended trainings and read books, and we did book reports, and we created a blog and fundraised. Again, about waist deep into it, we realized that this was not going to be easy. We were able to raise the funds that we needed through generous donations from family and friends and a few grants that we received. But what we didn't realize was some of the difficult decisions we were going to have to make. Could we take care of a child born addicted to drugs? Yeah. Could we take care of a child born with a family history of physical disabilities? Probably. Could we take care of a child born with fetal alcohol syndrome? We didn't think so. Could we take care of a child born with a strong family history of mental illness? We weren't sure. This was heartbreaking for us because we knew that those children needed families too, but we were certain that God had something else planned. So 
so two years went by not a single match not even a single fight we were terribly discouraged but god was working So this didn't turn out the way we planned. The pool that we had planned on going to actually didn't open until noon. I thought 8 o'clock. <sighs> Oops. So we ended up at the beach instead. Yep. Everyone's at the beach, that is true. our domestic adoption journey, our good friends began to get involved in the state foster system by providing respite care for foster families. And through respite care, they met and were eventually placed full time with two little girls who stole our hearts. Well, they stole my heart anyways, because this entire time Jared had been saying, we need to do foster care. I think we need to do foster care. And I kept saying, no. No way! It was scary enough the idea of having a strange child in my house, but I also knew that with foster care it comes heartbreak. That's just how it is. Foster care equals heartbreak. I was convinced that I would fall in love with a child, that I was only to care for temporarily, and then have to watch them go back to a situation that I knew was unsafe. I was adamant I will not be a revolving door, but God was working. months before we met those two little girls, I had met a little girl who was also in the foster system. She was everything that I was afraid of. She had such a heavy burden from the horrible things that had happened to her, and she was not shy about letting us at the school know about it. She was the first face that I had of a foster kid. She was the first face that God used to show me that these are God's children, and I knew that they needed me. So when our friends were thrust into the foster system, we followed shortly afterwards. I only kicked and screamed just a little bit. After all, we were going nowhere with our agency in St. Louis. We survived our first placement in 2014. Around the holiday season, they went home the day before Thanksgiving. But still, God was working. Yeah, it's about us. Hit that like button and subscribe. <laughs>